strange for me though, because I feel like the Azir Sivir trade was obvious, right? So yeah. it's like by banning by banning Sivir as your last ban here, you're just giving them Azir for free. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit curious what their their pick is going to be then. Is it going to be a Seraphine bot? Like maybe they feel like Sivir is a good answer into that, and they would rather have this side of the matchup anyway. But um, I, I it like, could also be mid. Yeah, I like any poke champions uh, into Azir, and it has been very successful. Uh, Abadaga to use it one time yeah. already in the mid lane matchup. And then it. Didn't. Didn't have the best performance yeah. that he wanted in that game, but it, was, it still is a very good matchup. Um, it was trying to get any sort of long range damage. I'm still waiting for the day we get a Xerath mm -hmm. uh, for some real poke damage, but. Yeah, in the past we've seen Belkaz and things like that too. Uh, it was interesting though, because Abadaga did it the one day, said he didn't play well in lane, they was gonna clap Bjergsen the next day on it. Yeah. And then they flexed it to bot, right? So um, will it actually be Bjergsen playing that matchup himself or is it gonna be you know, Hans playing this bot lane? I'm very interested, but Vi unbanned, he's going for it. They're going back to the game one special here. These are all three of their top side champions from game one where they did really run over the game. And now TL have to decide, do you answer jungle? Do you answer top? Like what is what is gonna be the, the choice I, here? I think the key there for sure is the Aatrox lock-in for Philip. It's just so comfortable. Uh, by far his most comfortable champion for top lane. We saw the big difference there on Renekton. So locking yeah. that one in early okay. before Team Liquid catch on uh, to the top lane counters. Troll King for Santorin is no surprise. Yep. Um, see about that front line though. So statistically, Kennen recently buffed is actually a good matchup into Aatrox. You're fast enough to get away from basically everything, chains or not. And obviously you outrange the guy, you can poke him a little bit. And then, hey, guess what? You like team fighting everyone but the Aatrox, you kind of hit the back line. So could be an option. Don't know if they have the damage. They don't have any physical damage lineup right now. I would say that the Olaf a second time around, even though, yeah, everyone's going to point that and be like, that would be crazy to do that again. It's actually way better if you have an enchanter on your team for team fighting later. A yeah. Seraphine actually does work perfectly with it. I do think Bibbo will use it different counter pick um but if he did go back to it it would be better this time around with the seraphine and to be honest his lane was going well before the solo kill like the solo kill happened yeah. that was the thing that matters but <laughs> um but like you know he was actually holding the lane really well you know forcing this ignite aatrox to stay in lane for a really long time if we've got one more reset without dying i think he's pretty comfortable in that matchup probably for the rest of the lane but it did of course go bad it's going to be a camille ban uh, which i find pretty interesting because that doesn't really feel like a Pupo champion uh, maybe it is some scrim info but he hasn't brought it out at all this split uh, and historically i don't feel like Bubo really ever plays camille i'm actually going to check if he's played it at all across his career yeah, unless they're really caring about backline dive, right? If the yeah. strat is, oh no, five games Caesar, in his whole career. Sure. Yeah. So uh, has played. I mean, she's been ultra meta before. Obviously, she's not a top pick right now. Um, if they're worried about protecting people against dives, right? Because there's no peel right now in this competition, right? Yeah. Like if you go on Azir, he's just kind of getting hit. So I could see like that being the logic, maybe. Um, Trendemir going away as well. It's also interesting because the, the double bot lane ban does make me think it, it may be actually a Hans Seraphine. The other option is you double ban Marksman, you pick your own Marksman on four to really thin the pool. Um, so we should find out exactly what it's gonna be you know, on this pick right here, if it is Seraphine bot or mid. No, nope, Bjergsen's second most played all split. Oh, that could be Bwipo top. Because be he, as well. he actually, that's one of his most uh, most played champions when you think back to like the initial start um, of this split. He was playing a ton in solo queue, was really, really into it. You're gonna get the Lucian Nami here. This is a really interesting draft. This is very, very uh, aggressive turn here for FlyQuest. I really like this lock-in for the Lucian Nami, actually, on bottom side, with Aphelios being banned out. Team Liquid looking like they are going to position the Seraphine in the hands of Han Sama. Yeah. And Okay. Okay, so okay. it's, it's going to be Swain mid for Bjergsen. An answer to a lot of dive, right? So he sees Vi, he sees Aatrox, he sees relatively short range AD and Lucian, and he's saying, you're coming at us. I have the answer here with the Swain, uh, with the Enchanter behind me here of that Seraphine. It's gonna be really hard to actually punch through that Aatrox. And I do like that it's actually swapped to mid because I think it's a really bad matchup into the Aatrox top. I just don't think you actually have the damage to really bully him out and he can look for these very, very aggressive trades. Yep. Uh, Renekton, of course, not working at all for Philip last game. We'll see if Whippo can do better on it. Uh, this is going to be, you know, very brawly matchup there on that top lane. I just kind of wonder what Team Liquid's doing in team fights because no one's that threatening. Like Renekton is not a Fiora or an Arelli who's putting out tons of damage team fight. Trundle's obviously not. Mm -hmm. Swain's not bad, but like people are doing things like Mandate, Riley, Zonia's like, none of us are cutting through champions fast. Like who's actually killing Azir? First strike on FlyQuest side and Ignite for Philip again. So he wants to go at Whippo. 
with the Seraphine there in the hands of Hansama. Uh, of course, hitting that ultimate bouncing off all of these bruisers that are in mm -hmm. front of him is one of the most important things in this team fight. That's how you get to the Azir because that can headshot an Azir. All you have to do, if you hit that ultimate, if Azir does not have flash, if he's already used a shuffle, um, if you're able to get a Nautilus ultimate to hit him in place and make sure that you get the Seraphine bounce, then you can just destroy him. And I think he's definitely going to need either a Banshee's or a Zonius because of that. You know, it's 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 going to be a, a question of if he thinks he can actually avoid the, the Seraphine poke to actually remove the Banshees, because that feels like that would be the big one. But uh, it's going to be a really interesting game. All right. Well, we get some more information from the Horse's Mouth. Blood Tigris standing by with FlyQuest's Sharks. Let's see what he has to say. Coming to you for game number three. A strong start for FlyQuest in game number one, but now one and one in the scoreboard. How do you plan on bouncing back? I mean, we did the side selection switch, right? When blue side looked to first pick Azir, still at the way. So we're gonna see how this game goes. It looks like enemy team opted into punishing our Vi pick with a lot of, you know, beefy frontline champions like Trundle, Sven, and the Necton. So we're gonna see if we're gonna be able to use our pick or not. Yep, some firepower coming from Philip as well, bringing Ignite a strong start from him. How is he handling the playoff pressure? Uh, so far, you know, he did amazing. You know, game one got his f first solo kill in lane, so I'm really proud of him. Yeah, thank you for the insight. Back to the casters. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, as Sharks was talking about, you know, he feels that their draft strategy really was more punishing the Vi, right? Not giving good ulting options. You don't really love ulting the Swain, the Trundle, the Renekton. You know, it's pretty much only Hans that it feels like you want to dive in onto that backline for. So uh, Philip's going to have to be there to really kind of get on that backline as well. Because it's, but it's very difficult to actually dive through a Swain and through a Trundle with the slows and the ulti and everything. So I think that's going to be the trick here for FlyQuest. And it'll be interesting to see if they can actually you know, kind of circumvent those problems. Meanwhile, for Team Liquid, for Santorin, I'm looking for some early objective control. Um, Trundle, very, very good at these new neutral objectives. And then, of course, as we mentioned, this team can operate on one item power spikes very easily. So they could naturally try and snowball and group up for those. But a half camp lead for the Trundle right now is by Paths down to her wolves. Uh, wants to make sure there wasn't going to be an early, early counter jungle and then looking to play towards the bottom side. I mean, Lushinami obviously can be so aggressive. This is airy for the Seraphine, so she doesn't have a lot of innate tankiness here. A lot of times the Seraphine support can work is, ah, or any of them Channer is, ah, I'm running Guardian, like, you're gonna be fine there. Pretty nice trade out, out of Whippo, gonna feel really good at this one, as he can just always jump right back out. So Renekton definitely favored this matchup. Yeah, Philip just didn't have the angle there. If he had the chain from straight on down the lane, then you can't just dash out of it so easily, but uh, it was kind of a side-to-side -side chain, which means Whippo can just dash out back very, very easily. Trying to look for these aggressive trades here every time uh, the Electrocute is up. Drop the E on the Lucian, dash in, get a little bit of damage down there, and see how much you can actually farm with the first strike. But they got it rooted up. They're going to look for a kill. Q cleanses the way. Something is some damage. Won't quite die as the Ignite was cleansed pretty quickly. I can't trade back too much. Afro running out of mana as Vi. well. Can't get that much healing. Vi is coming down the river, but seen by the ward. So that's why Afro was trying to keep Korja J interested. If it wasn't for that ward seeing Vi, maybe uh, they're able to bait somebody back in. But is going to be unsuccessful move from the Vi down river. Team Liquid coming back to try and push this wave in. Yep. Get the full crash. Interestingly, FlyQuest, I think, made the thought that, oh, it's not going to be a very aggressive lane. You're not going to trade against Seraphine too much. It's the Relic Shield star for Afro. It's why he's out of mana. It's why he can't sustain Johnson. Mm -hmm. But I'm just surprised you picked Lucianami and you're not expecting to trade. Yeah. Oh, oh he's just dead. He just gets hooked in. That's got to have been a hook from Core JJ. Afro just gets hit in broad daylight. It's probably one of those, oh, go into the brush, fake that you're recalling, gone yeah. back, and he just nails the hook. Core JJ. Back to back game where he's had Afro moves number. Headbutted him into the turret last time around on the wrap around gank. This time, off screen hook. Anything could happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to think Afro is trying to pull the wave to freeze. And like you said, fake a recall in the brush, land the hook. And I think that's why he was going for the Relic Shield. He's potentially worried about the all in on him. You know, maybe thinking if he gets locked down, they could follow that up. Um, but just looking for a little bit of harass. Oh, what's forward. even in the bush? Yeah, that, just turns back around. You've got to flash those, gone. Afro. Yeah. yeah. Hans was gone. And he's like, if it's, yeah. if it's, if it's just exactly. the, the, the Nautilus, I live, but. Yeah, you got someone else there. Cure the wall, maybe. Yeah, goes for it with Sweeper on. Information known, though, and it's pretty easy to dash away. A nice attempt towards topside. Farm within 5 CS. And Philip has the wave moving toward him. So uh, with four extra to kill, this lane is actually relatively close right now. Okay, so first dragon is coming up too, though, uh, as Philip kind of groups up this wave. Yep, won't get, the, uh, won't get the interrupt, but that does turn my eyes towards that bottom lane. Uh-oh. Because they do want to start stacking pretty early here. Jump Control ward ball. already in the river. Flash hook is a possibility. Centaurin is around. Pillar would almost seal the fate. Anchor. Good dash away and doesn't catch anyone else. 
But Centaurin, gonna find a face check. Decent damage, you pillar. Now they have no hook to follow it up though. But can he walk far enough away? He might have to burn his own flash. He does, doesn't want to run left through Centaurin. I think he would have died if he'd ran left, but I choose to get over the wall. It's a tough call, man. I don't know, like double longsword already. You are very squishy at this point when you're slowed up. Yeah, I don't know if you have um, double. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say. You know, maybe he could have done it. At the same time, he definitely couldn't have run right because he would have gotten killed off by Hans and Kor. But good pressure down on that bot side. The pink ward denying vision of Santorin and, you know, getting Afro punished again. And that's very meaningful for my question of the early dragon stacking because uh, no support flash there makes it very tenuous now for FlyQuest to answer. And as I said, Trundle's super good at just starting up these neutrals. can easily solo them if left alone. Push on bottom lane here for Hansama and Core JJ means he does start it up, but mid lane push means Azir moves first. Can yeah, Takui be the difference maker? Oseus Flash, he wants to go for Broke. Q over the wall, look for the Smite. It's a possibility. Smite? Uh, yeah, I believe it's up for the Centaur now as well. Jose, he's, he's gonna go for flash, it. flash, so he could. Yeah, he, 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 he could, could his yellow might. it. <laughs> and besides, I don't want to guarantee to lose my Flash just to have a chance at Drake. Yeah. And they get rid of the ward in time anyway, and it's not going to be a good possibility. So claim on the dragon, Team Liquid. That's why you always pull the dragon out. Uh, if it was mm -hmm. still in the origin point, then there's not as much of a risk there of trying to go for a little yo-yo play. But with Core JJ there and the dragon pulled out, yeah. you get hooked in. You can't get back over even to the wall to flash. And Hans was even holding his empowered spell. So like, if you go over, you get passive autoed, you get hooked, you get rooted, you're mm -hmm. gonna die, right? You're very unlikely to be able to get back. You can even use pillar to actually push you away from the wall so you can't necessarily flash over it very easily. Uh, really good start here for TL, uh, but it is not a massive gold lead by any means. First strike probably helping a little bit uh, with that for FlyQuest. And you know, Philip looking good, just trying to shove in this wave here. Takui roaming up trying to get a little bit of a, a threat on this dive, but Core JJ is already hovering here. He has the read. If they go for this and they don't see Core, they could easily die. Whipple has ult. Q, not going to land at the start. Here's the Ignite for Aggro, though. He's got to cut back a little bit. They have the damage, scoops him back in. Core flashes in, flies, and does not find the kill, but you've got a very low health Whippo. Pull back in into court onto Jose Diodo. He's going to stay alive now as well. You can't, stay, you can't stay around. There's going to be more reinforcements from Team Liquid coming up. Yeah, and you got Swain coming around, Trundle coming around, healing enough for Webb, he's gonna stay alive. Yes, he's out of flash, but you can always TP to fully heal back up. Almost stops the recall. The instincts to take the correct brush, Philip gets out. A play like that does have pretty big cost. So that was a very important read from Team Liquid. Good yeah. communication. Whippo and Core JJ talking constantly there. Uh, Core comes up, he hovers just out of the Fog of War. Great vision toggle there by the observers to see it. And it gives Team Liquid the extra presence here with all the extra health bars and the recalls, they just start up this rift trail. They've got the members. FlyQuest coming a little bit late. Yep, somebody's gonna claim it. There's Harold on the inventory, but they could go for a bit more here. Corjay level five, get away from the first slow. When's the ult coming across there? He is six. Will there be a fight? Fierce with those is gonna be really hard to fight though. Aatrox buying a bit of time, getting another 1k health. I mean, this is honestly, he's pretty much ultable. Dives in with the flash, gets over the wall. Does he have the damage? Jose Dino takes down wall, but he trades his life back for it. Santorin over the wall, but Core JJ doesn't have an easy way out. He was slowed. The sword is gonna claim it. A two for one in favor of FlyQuest. And now Whippo, without an ult, without a flash, takes the calling, finds his stun. But how do you get away from this one? He's not gonna find it. You Double dash, it's not gonna matter. Who gets the red buff? They're gonna try to give it to Johnson. He claims it. Three to one FlyQuest. FlyQuest battling back here. Hans is pushing on that bottom side. TL did get the Herald, but FlyQuest getting the kills there. Not going down without a fight by any means. And Takui has been so big in all of these scraps, getting there, chunking people down. You know, Bjergsen getting so low before the commitment to the engage. Philip with the double Q2 knockup on both the soul laners and then over the wall, Afro E onto Takui gets him so far down. That was, yeah, beautiful setup there from Philip as he's disengaging. The Q2 into dash backwards and he had the infernal chain on Bjergsen. That chain meant that Takui got to have two soldiers right next to him, autoing for a huge chunk on the Swain. Uh, being able to burst him down takes out so much of this perceived giant team fight in the mid game for their neutral objectives that Team Liquid wanted to have. Yep. Um, so if you take out kind of the heart there, the Swain, that big threat early on, then FlyQuest chasing down all those kills does mm -hmm. make up for that Rift Trail cost. And while the Rift Trail still is in the inventory for Team Liquid to use, it's only gonna be about two plates of gold worth for them. So FlyQuest quite happy. Really beautiful staff out of FlyQuest. The Rose really played nicely. Whippo will not get back. And that means he gets yoinked. 
Well done. Good trade by Phillip, who's already feeling good about top side. And now he probably has to leave with Jose in the area, and he doesn't know the exact timer on Violti for sure. You know, Vi about to have it, so he's got to wait around. He's camping this brush to make sure that Jose isn't wrapping around on him, because if Vi face checks you, you will win that with your ulti. Uh, so trying to make sure that he's not getting wrapped around on, now drops the ward to cover and make sure that he's not getting dove still. You know, smart play there from Whippo. Uh, and does have to pop the ulti, so... I don't know if there's a scrap going on, on top side. I think he pressed it to just maybe get top lane clear, no problem. Didn't want to get maybe one shot by Philip diving with Ignite. I think that was maybe the possibility, just afraid of that one. But bot lane, plates work down, plates shared. Force tries to drop the solo gold, make sure it goes to the carries, and that is team looking back in the gold lead now off of a huge rift arrow. The balance of jungle pressure here, seeing Vi camping top lane so much, Whippo is earning his team presence on the bottom side. So full tower there for Team Liquid. First one of the game. You also get the bonus tower gold there. Uh, so in fact, much more than the expected mm -hmm. just two turret plate value. Huge stuff. It also lets them get their reset off before Dragon. 13 seconds on. Perfect reset timing there for FlyQuest. Or for Team Liquid, excuse me. Uh, as they can... Uh, return with the full Leandries for this fight. Yeah, and the Sunderer done on Centauran as well, right? So both those guys, you know, completing their mythics off of the gold they, they gained from that play. Uh, Johnson does have his Gale Force, so you know, he's looking good as well, but it does feel like this is TLs for sure with their with FlyQuest bot lane hitting top. Smart TP out of Bjergsen as well, made sure he was there. He spell booked over and it's like, yep, I'm gonna have bot lane control. We're gonna make sure we have this one. And Drake, it's gonna be 2-0. And so far, Drakes have actually uh, been completely correlated with the winner of the game. So though it is a close one, Team Liquid already halfway to Mountain Soul. And that's the plan from Champion Select. When you've got these one item power spike, team fighting giant AOE yeah. champions for Team Liquid, you have to stick to the plan. Even with the early bumps there and the blue invade up in the jungle, still focusing on the dragon stacking, now further invading, taking away red. They fully sacrificed that top turret. See Bwipo just farming, farming Krugs. He knows, everybody on the team knows, we're giving it up in payment for this. And it's it would be devastating for FlyQuest Scomp to actually fight into a Mountain Soul. When you think about Vi and Aatrox and these champions that are a lot of upfront damage diving in, you gotta burst people down. It's already gonna be hard enough to do that uh, against what they are drafting here. Bjergsen does have exhaust. This is a, a tough go, I think. Wants to find key range, not quite gonna be there. And of course, Santorin and Core were waiting anyway. If there was a play, he probably lives no matter what. He's got exhaust. Q was on cooldown at that point. Going to try again, but he's not playing it for the wave. So no attempt there, even though the supports are gone. Bjergsen now giving enough respect to not be caught out. And look at this, though. It's huge, huge, huge vision for them. Um, just fully lit up for Team Liquid. So that's why, with the confidence, he knows there's only one bush that, that he could be hiding in. And it's that lane brush. So as long as he respects the distance from the lane brush, they can keep on pushing. But Bowie even move back in. They only gave up. Uh, I believe it was at one turret plate already taken, so I think it was only one turret yep. plate there on the top side, uh, and Team Liquid get, got to take over the whole red quadrant jungle. So back to a pretty close game gold-wise right now. There are some waves to farm. I mean, that's you know 200 gold right there for Bjergsen easily. Uh, so lead is still there. Team Liquid side gold as well as the Drakes and Centauran coming around behind Philip. Flash ult all available. Gonna be hard to find a kill onto him. The next dash gonna be up pretty soon. Gonna go ahead and take the first slow. Running a bit lower on HP, does not get the pullback on a Centaur. Burns his own flash, could be a kill. Q flash would kill. He doesn't even need it. Just walks in, takes a bite out of crime. Troll King, how many times does it have to happen? Centaurin again on this champion. Stomping down in playoffs. Yeah, he has the chase down, and it's tough because Philip can't fight him because Bjergsen is going to catch up, right? So that's really oh, what it's about. Nice. Really good cue. Beautiful timing there from Core JJ. My goodness. Right out of the Vi ultimate. He gets the buffer. Will Flakwa start up the second Herald that has now spawned here? A blue Orb dropped on it. Takui is going to have to clear out mid, so it means TL get first move. Bjergsen back from base here. Still has that stopwatch, still has the exhaust gonna be really strong. Yeah, I mean, that's actually just a team fight winning play. Corte J gets out, not even a chunk on this support mm -hmm. for investing your Vi ultimate. Like that is just massive for Team Liquid. And again, these one item power spikes, great. We're just gonna keep forcing. Bounce back and forth between the neutral objectives. We got the dragon already. Let's go back up, get the Rift Herald, keep on pushing down these towers. And Herald, gold is gonna grow. 500 more gold to add to the coffers pretty soon. Be over a thousand easily to find that summon. And you can see it in how they move all of their vision coverage. Always like looking at this for, for the pro team. 
just a second ago, we were highlighting this full bottom jungle. And now they moved it all up into the top side where they want to attack next. Rift Herald taken, took the top side objective. We're going to get this uh, outer turret next, pop that Herald, and be able to move in way safer. So good stuff there from Team Liquid. Um, you know, doing... Uh, doing those basics as well as executing on these objectives. I'm going to be really interested to see if FlyQuest even try to fight for the third dragon because, you know, I'm looking at the, the items and I feel like they don't really have an easy way to win any of these fights. It's going to be very, very difficult. They still haven't been able to actually get Bjergsen to use a stopwatch or exhaust or anything. Like, that alone is going to make such a difference in one of those team fights. If Jose dives in and just gets immediately exhausted or Philip gets immediately exhausted, uh -oh. I don't know that they can contest. Early ult. Gets away from the slow, but will he get yoinked back for the rest of it? There's the ult for Jade. Everything else is going to land. No problem. 1v3. He's going to try his best. Gore Drinker's up. Gets a bit of health back after the Q3, but he's still going to drop. There's no way you live for this one with everything on cooldown. Team Liquid get one. Bjerg gets the credit. And again, the groundwork from Team Liquid. The fundamentals are way better. They completely wipe out this vision in the long lane where there's no tower. Come on. They pick the split pusher again before the objective, 30 seconds left on that dragon, and they can easily set it up. They're even gonna force down secondary tower here with how quick Santorin is attacking. Yeah, Trundle just crushes towers, but it's, it's been a tough one for Philip, right? He's getting picked off in that side lane. Has really very little vision actually covering him in his own jungle. And that is one of the disadvantages of playing an Enchanter support. It's very difficult for Afro to actually, you know, make these solo trips in. And Core is just moving around, looking for picks constantly. Gonna find a plate for the backside. The Jose does around, flashes back to safety. Pillar by some time. Good damage out of the sway. Will it be enough? Flashing over the wall! A second kill now to Bjergsen, chasing in for more. TP comes across. Bubble is early. And that means Whippo can find a target too quickly. You can jump the wall, stays alive, but third Drake is alive, and there's no way. Again, again, a massive snowball from Team Liquid. Really, really well done this time. They pick up the jungler. Ooh. Don't get the Seraphine ult over the top, but they want to push in tower first before returning for the dragon. Harold will definitely ensure that they uh, get it 100%. Five seconds left on Jose on that buy. Looking for a play, not going to find one here is Fly Quest. They can kill a ward. 30 gold goes to Afro move, but mid lane tier one is out. Do want to highlight as well. Uh, one of the big differences here from Pro Trundle to Solo Q Trundle, they only put a couple of points in Q before maxing the W. That's why Santorin always attacks so quickly, burns down these objectives. Vi is up now, though, because they stayed around on the first tower. Vi is here, and they're going to push them out. Wow, without ults, they give up the chance at Soul Point for a turret. They could have killed another point in time. Too much of a time investment on that yeah. mid tower. Just too much of a time investment on that mid tower. I think definitely was the call to grab Dragon instead. Yeah, I agree. Putting yourself at soul point, it feels like it almost wraps up the game. Bjergsen also didn't have his ulti. Santorin used his flash and ulti. Hans just used his ulti. So they didn't want to risk taking a fight without those ultimates available. Really, almost all of TL's champions are super ultimate reliant. You know, Sway without an ulti is absolute garbage. All right, Whippo did not go for the Blade of the Rune King Renekton, so it's not as much 1v1 threat, but uh, coming again, does though. have a Trundle, and tr uh, junglers are a lot of uh, 1v2 threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unfair Here, unfair top build. laner duels. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, honestly, though, yeah, that because especially if you consider if they had the Rift Herald in their pockets, that tower was going to get taken at some point. So a little bit of a speed bump here for Team Liquid is going to cost them another five minutes if they want to get towards that soul. And, and I do think the concern is always Azir. Like, yes, there is there is good poke over, uh, you know, with Seraphine. And I know there's some debate about, like, who really scales better because of, of the kind of the range that you can have and you, the ability to poke out the Azir potentially. Uh, but if Azir gets the three items, Azir is always a massive threat in these team fights. And Takui has shown that he is incredibly good Ooh. on these control mages. There's a good uh, queue. And you can see, you mentioned him. We got the graphic up. FTX Little Gold. Gold leader of the game is the Azir, Tukui is going to have to be the primary carry. Obviously, Lucian's going to have a hard time finding good targets when it is this, this, mm -hmm. the meatball comp, honestly, right? Seraphine's shield and haste is an AOE to everybody, and you got a bunch of pseudo melee champs who are like, get me in there. Yeah, and I kind of feel like you almost can't even go into auto in a lot of these fights, you know, for Johnson, unless you're running over it. So you end up in a lot of, a lot of cases as a short range marksman like Lucian, you kind of just end up being your ultimate, right? Like you get E'd by Nami, you go for the big culling, um, but if you dash in onto Swain and get stunned or dash in and get pillared in, you are going to be in so much trouble. I think that's why we're Epifier Cannon. Like, yeah. I can at least get, you know, Q double auto off, you know, no problem, get something, and then play it out from there, but, you know, getting more of the combo across. Yeah, we'll see what it looks like. 
Uh, his farm has been fine. Seraphine on her way to Rileys. Absolutely love early Rileys as champion. Mm -hmm. Your E is an auto root. Double cast is an auto stun. That feels great. Um, so I think a very smart build there. And also just skewing towards durability, right? Frozen Heart second. And for Trundle, you've got uh, the Rileys build path going in now for the Swain. So uh, making sure they're not going to get one shot uh, by Vilution. That box pretty well checked. Johnson has definitely been impressive for FlyQuest this series, even in their loss, I feel like. Mm -hmm. He's got his BF Sword ready here, looking for that Infinity Edge crit spike. Could be the big spike that FlyQuest wants to actually fight back on. You can always try and just give up Dragon number three if Team Liquid are there first, if they've got vision control. Uh, wait for the actual soul fight to give yourselves more time to scale up that Azir. Uh, and a better chance at healing the fight. And so he is going for the Banshees. You know, I, I said uh, he had to go for Banshees or, or the Zonias. He does actually go for that Banshees, but it means he's got to do a good job not getting poked good off. Flash. Good flash, but also a nice force there from Takui. They are going to lose their top lane tower again. The W Max Trundle, you just crush through towers, especially with Divine Sunder. You have the Sheen proc, your Q works on towers, your auto reset, and you get all that free attack speed. So, uh, one of the best, if not, if not maybe the best jungler, are actually killing towers. Yeah, I can't think of a better one right now. Jungle Tristana. Boom. Uh, Velvet, <laughs> you take Rift Got me. <laughs> Rift Hero and Velvet, yeah, yeah. baby. Velvet with their army of little void yes. worms. Baron's getting burned down. Speaking of void worms, though. Fly quest. They just need to check some vision here. Let's see if they can actually threaten it. Um, actually, they're fish. Remora. It's okay. Fair we enough. got a fight going on. Wait, fish. Philip. Yeah. <laughs> Remora, or I believe a kind of fish. Um, I think they're still on it. Like, yeah, fly, they are. Fly quest has got to get in there a little yeah, bit. It isn't really that high, honestly. I mean, what is their damage on Baron? It's a Seraphine. Bjergsen cannot solo own this, as uh, you've got Whippo back in base anyway. But I, re I really like this from FlyQuest. Just push them off. Takui is bot lane. They don't need to do anything more than that. Don't look for the hard engage. Just play it smart. All right, Team Liquid. Again, need to get back to those fundamentals that were getting them ahead really effectively in the early game. 40 seconds left on the dragon. Ooh, that's danger. You're going to get pillared. I think you can live. He's going to. Smite it. Okay. But it's like, ooh, you cute into the camp. That's That can be scary. And one of the, the problems with TL doing it, like they have a very safe... Uh, Baron because of Onsama, but it's also a very slow Baron, right? Like, they don't have any really high DPS champions. Swain is terrible at Baron. Seraphine is terrible at Baron as far as, like, actually burning it down. Um, so, you know, bought a lot of time for Takui. He gets solo gold, and now he's working towards his death cap here. Black Quest are actually coming. I, I think they want to fight this mm -hmm. one. They double recalled both solo laners. They don't want to wait for the Dragon Soul fight. They want to fight now, and Team Liquid do have vision control. Let's see about that Seraphine ult. Where Nautilus is. A little bit of poke damage only to the front line, but it's a good damage to the Aatrox. He needs the Gore Trigger. Heals back up all the way to full and goes right back to safety, but double flashes down. Bwepo has arrived. The flash in. Bjergsen gets a slow. The pull back. The one for nothing. Team Liquid just burned through the front line. They gotta wait out the, the Swain ult. Now they could actually potentially look for a re-engage here. They still have ulties on Takui and Jose Diodo. Johnson almost has his, so they might try to utilize this super strong Azir to get in there. Whipple's still going to mark as well. No flash, no ult, but I mean, he's going to be safe to jump the wall anyway, so it might not matter a lot. Jose Diodo has to be careful. And there is Spell Shield down. 5k health on the Drake. How does the 5v4 even look? Because Bjergsen running low on mana. In goes the Nautilus. That's Afro. No, it's Koi. It's Jose Diodo gone. Out goes John to the side. The scoop. But does Tukui find anything to kill at all? Fights Koi JT. Needs the shot. Gets a one. But already the kills are coming through. Team Liquid crushed this fight. It's four kills to a single death and a Drake on top. They're right back on track, baby. Team Liquid full steam ahead. Dragon number three picked up with the extra kill money, too. That is going to get them nicely to around that 30 minute mark, 29 minutes, Dragon uh, Soul will come up and we will see you back in the same position. Mm -hmm. Team Liquid, early positioning. Again, like we went over with the Fog of War, Seraphine Ult right over the back line. Got both Philip and Vi stuck in it. So they both had to flash away. They try and kite out uh, Bjergsen's ultimate here just with the one pickup. FlyQuest feel like they want to risk it here off of Dragon number three and they poke around. Takui comes over, spell shield down. Yeah, I think it was a decent opportunity because the ults were all missing from TL. And Takui is so strong at that point. But Whippo goes in on the wrap around there, just mistimed on the stopwatch from Takui. He was trying to go in and sweep down Quarter J, kill him off immediately. Went in a split second too early, so he's still immune. Doesn't actually get hit by that Azir ulti and then gets locked up. But look at all the damage yeah. from Takui. 
Let's see, how much gold does he have now? He almost has enough for his next large rod, so he needs, you know, a good 1,300, 1,200 gold um, to be able to actually get his full death cap. That is when he's going to be really, really strong. Uh, but it's still quite a ways to go here, and TL are, are pressing on the map. I think the biggest difference maker is going to be Philip finishing Guardian Angel. Living 30% longer allows him the time to frontline for a zero to hit and get the first reset. And already it's Vi being attacked. No way you're going to look for that one. Whipple claims the kill credit. Looking for a bit more. Oh, that is a really good pillar. Johnson able to jump back away from Nautilus. But, of course, Jose Diotto had gone for Gorge Rinker, not Gorge Rinker, uh, the, the healing cut. Hemp up Chainsword, Squishy picked off. Philip can jump the water to the left, does so. Stays alive. I love that TL didn't overcommit ultis there. You know, they did use a couple, but they saved Hans and Bjergsen. So there's no easy turn here uh, for FlyQuest. They can't just push in and force him down. Bjergsen's going to be on the side. They have no vision. Core and Bjergsen have to be lurking in the wings, you think. You die slowly. That's the question is, okay, how much time do we really have? Bjergsen is on the wing. He's going to find really high damage to Aphromoo and now looks for a bit more. Johnson will try stopwatch and they're going to try to run away. But Santorin's already here. He's got a slow and he's got a kill on Sama. Gets another 4 to 11 and guess what? We're still full health right back on a Baron. Juke there from Philip. Takoi is still alive. The hope for FlyQuest is the Azir. Team Liquid all healing right back up, though. They can keep on starting this objective up. Jose is alive. Philip does not have much to do. Gordrinker's in for a bit of time, but again, they keep shielding, they keep healing, and the kills cannot happen. Tuk Tuk, does he have the way for the ulti? But the health bars, again, they're high enough. Hansama's okay. Azir Poke does a lot here. Does someone get over the wall? Can they get anything else going on? Pillar, they get rid of. The first little bit, the yoink back. Over the wall goes Whippo, but Vi can combo. Ulti comes in, can they get this kill? Nearly! He's burning and he won't quite die. The shield's coming again. Nami tries again, Ulti popped. Baron, 2.5,000! Leandri's getting low. Smite, he a Babel, and a Blast Cone. Can it happen? There's no vision. He needs to try, but does he have the way in? Tukui gets Core JJ. 1k health! He's not gonna get the steal, but they will get the kill. Down goes two. Now scoop back, getting some space now is Tukui. Hans has no flash. Engaged. He can't get out of the pit. They gotta try to fight their way out. But, I mean, do they have the damage? They're gonna try with Johnson gets going thin, cleanses and get back out. But does Chukwe have the damage? Dives back over the wall. But everyone from TL still here. St. Jordan's the front line. Here comes the charm. Sidestep. Johnson doesn't have the damage. Nearly goes down, but Bjergsen's in the chase. Gets another one out of mana. It's oh. And it's now 15 to 5. Afro, he's slowed. Afro will die. Team Liquid play the Baron Bait, and Team Liquid come out with everything. What a long, drawn-out fight there. Takui just didn't quite ever have the damage to finish these people off. He had Core and Whippo down to like 5% health so early. If he had the death cap before that, he could have potentially won out here. They tried to fight it out, but TL holding and waiting for so long until the Q had expired there from Jose, and he had no flash. Wasn't on the blast cone, so they go over the wall, they kill him off, and now Hans with no flash available, they knew they had to try to fight their way out as a squad here. They couldn't just leave him. Yeah, it seemed like they know they don't have a lot of range or huge spike damage, but they do have a lot of sustain. And with the Baron buff, here they oh, come. Oh, there's the root. Johnson can try to get away. Knocked up. Will it be enough for Santorin? Quick frontlining in. Jose Dito buys enough time. Turret is helping, though. They could lock him in place and try to go for broke but they're still just too tanky. The shield is still there. DPS may not be high, but guess what? The heals per second are still there. Hans Summit keeps everyone able to get out. Yeah, and it's, it's the trade of flashes there. Philip looking for the Q flash on the Hans. He just responds with a flash of his own. But you can never look for the hard engage until Swain LT is down, and Bjergsen is being so patient with it, it feels almost impossible for Jose to have an impact. 29 minutes, that soul is up. Dragon soul available, we'll meet you right back here. Team Liquid gonna burn it down. Mountains have the most health, they will take the longest to kill. And there's no way, they're like, it's, we've taken too long. They don't know what the health bar is, but they're like, it was too much fog, we couldn't find anything. So out they go, Mountains so claim. You thought it was hard to kill Team Liquid already. Only five kills on the map so far for FlyQuest. It has got a whole lot tougher. Yeah, the only one who can really do anything is Takui. He does have that death gap, but the rest of the team around him really has no threat. You know, we're not even on two items yet for Philip. It's three items for Bjergsen, three items for Hans here. You know, the efficiency on their side is so, so high. Johnson has not really been able to get super involved, and even some of his callings are just getting pillared out by Santorin, which is really his only way to join the fight. He's in damage, though. Will it matter? Not really. Oh, here's the Yonk. This could be so much damage, and Jose will fall again. Ult does nothing. Scoop to the side, only buys some space. Not as Ulti's gonna land, but there's a, still a front line to kill, and they're gonna get another couple more. Three to nothing, and now there's no fight left in FlyQuest. 
And it is fight or flight, and it is just running away, true to the name. Now onto the Nexus turrets they go. First one to be attacked, 5v0, realistically. Nothing else can be done. Team Liquid again in control of this game. The comp looked good. Answering the Vi with a bunch of meatballs, and indeed, she got chopped up. So down goes the Nexus. Down goes game three. Team Liquid up two to one. Series points here acquired for Team Liquid. Is that great? You had fun in game number one, FlyQuest. But now the veterans are getting serious. Back-to-back -back wins, early snowball, Bjergsen already with the momentum. Bop, bop, bop. They're looking for game number three. Yep. I think the draft was just so smart from TL. You know, bringing out the Swain. You see the Aatrox, you see the Vi. That gave them so much trouble in game number one. And they answer with this really, really strong anti-dive here yep. uh, with the Swain, with the Seraphine. It's so difficult. Like, your only target to really Vile is the Seraphine, but you can't dive past the Swain. It's just never gonna work. is never gonna solo kill this guy in the back line, and no one else can actually run through this Rile Swain, so it became almost impossible to fight out. It's like, the only way you win a fight is you somehow get Bjergsen uses his ult, disengage it, then find a re-engage while he has no ult, and it was just really way too difficult for them to navigate, I think, in the later stages of the game. Yeah, there's so much sustain. Like we said, all those champs, one item, boom, they're ready to go fight yep. these team fights. Trundle even got a Spirit Visage. Does that plus W increase healing? You're yeah. just seeing and get like 500 chunks over and over. Yeah. Very good stuff there from Team Liquid. Nice snowball. It was a nice snowball. You mentioned a lot of the the, um, the basics, uh, fundamentals here for Team Liquid. I mean, th the first blood in bot lane, like ah, kicking himself there as Aphmu, right? Because it meant the dragon stack was early. Lushinami should have some lane pressure, and it was just it was written off with, with the early kill coming across. And then from there, yeah, they, they got so many pickoffs on a fill up in the side lane, right? Like he's trying to play long lane against Bjergsen with the bot lane turret's already gone, and it's like Toronto showed up. Oh, that means Drake. Oh, Toronto shut up again. It means the Drake. Sorry, bud. And and yeah, the, the ability to go for like a 3v1 pick never happened for FlyQuest. It was always team fights and the shields were always there. So well done, Team Liquid. After a strong game three for TL Honda, we are heading on.